Hello you two, this is Mrs Costin speaking to you again this week. Miss Chalice and Mrs Chiswell and I hope you had a nice week and enjoyed the last week's learning tasks. But what have you got to do this week? This week for English we want you to write a non chronological report. Can you remember from last week what this is? If not, go back and have a look at the video because Miss Chalice explains this really well. We want you to write a report about a topic that interests you. So it could be a sports that you like to play, a science topic that we've covered, a history topic, a geography topic, or a famous person that you are interested in. Your report can be about anything that you want. It's up to you to decide. But remember to plan it first, add pictures and captions. There's more information and resources in this week's folder, as well as examples of a non chronological report for you to look at. I decided I would write a report about grizzly bears because I love grizzly bears. They are one of my favourite animals. So there's my title and here are my subheadings. And these are really the things that I wanted to know about grizzly bears. And then having done my research, I wrote keywords under each subheading to make sure that I include these in my report. And at the bottom, I've got some interesting facts to include. I then put all this information into my report. I started with a title and I included a picture that might make it interesting for the reader. I started with an introduction. This normally entices the reader to carry on reading and find out more. I used a subheading and then included a text to cover this subheading and answer this question. I then added a photo and a caption underneath. A caption normally has a few words to describe or tell you about the photo. If you don't have a photo, you can always do a drawing. I then carried on with my second hub subheading. What do grizzly bears eat? And I added a photo of a grizzly bear eating some berries and some text to go with it. I'm going to carry on with this report in the same way and finish on interesting facts. In science, we want you to recall what a habitat means. Did you know that different types of plants grow in different habitats? For example, in a desert, in a forest, on top of water, in the ocean. This week we want you to find out about the different habitats that plants live in. Why do they live there? How do they survive? I've got three videos here for you to have a look at to find out for yourselves. And then we want you to choose either of these activities. So you can choose one plant from each habitat to draw and write about, remembering to label your drawings. Or you could choose two plants from different habitats, draw and label them and write and explain how they are different. There's more information in this week's folder and there's also activity sheets to help you. I decided to compare the plants in two habitats, so a desert and a forest. So I've got a picture of a cactus its, and I drew its roots, and then a picture of a forest plant. So what do I need to do next? Yes, my labels. So a cactus has got spikes, it has a waxy skin, and it has shallow, widespread roots. I need to do the same for this plant here but I might do that later. Now I need to write about them and compare them. So I wrote, a cactus has spikes, but the plant in the forest has large leaves to absorb as much light as it can in the dark forest. That's a good start, but I'm sure that when you do yours, you could do much better and include a lot more information. 
For music this week, we've got two delightful songs. The first one being called Don't Hug a Cactus. I wonder what that is. Anyway, you'll meet these delightful characters as well. And we want you to add your own actions or amazing dance move to the song. And the next song is Don't Worry, Be Happy. I want you to dance along to it and join me with the chorus and generally be happy. I love this song. It makes me feel happy all the time. For geography this week, we want you to think about climates. What does climate mean? Where are the hot and cold climates of the world? Is it hot along the middle of the world by the equator? Or is it hot by the poles at the top and the bottom, south and north? You can use the resources in this week's folder to find out. Then, we want you to learn about the continent of North America and a city called San Francisco, where you'll see this famous bridge. It's called the Golden Gate Bridge. But where is it in the world? Where is San Francisco? Where is North America? Then for history, we want you to find out about this lady. Her name is Mary Seacole. Why is she a significant individual? And again, you can use the link here to find out about her. Maybe you could write a report. For mathematics this week, we want you to carry on with the two, five and ten times tables. Remember to use TT Rockstar Maths. Also, do you remember what statistics means from last week? It means to collect, sort and answer questions about data or information. And this week's activities are all problems for you to solve. You might need to sort some of the information onto your own pictogram, tally chart or block graph in order to solve them. I might read the information on pre-drawn ones to answer questions. There's a challenge about ladybirds and another one about socks, which I'm going to come to later. There's other challenge cards for you to try and lots of different activities and resources in this week's folder. And then you can also use this website, Top Marks, which I think is brilliant, and the White Rose Maths to sort out other information. Okay, so one of the maths challenges this week is to do with socks. It's a good job I washed mine. I wouldn't like to be working with smelly socks. Anyway, I better sort them out then. Right, I've got those two look like the same. So I can put those together. Um, oh dear, they don't go together. They don't match. So they are odd. They're a mismatched pair. And that's what you have to do this week. We want you to mix up pairs of socks so that they are all mismatched, like these, this one. And there is no repetition. So no pairs of socks must match another pair of, of odd socks. So if we start off with three, and then I mix those two up, that one's still the same. They still matches. But this is odd and that one is odd. They are mismatched. But they are the two the same. Look, I'll put them that way. See? So, but every single one has got to be different. So now, maybe if I swap it over, they are all different. They are all odd. And none of them are the same. But how would I record this? Yes, what a good idea. You could draw them on a piece of paper, couldn't you? So that's what I've done. So here, I've drawn my first pair. I've drawn my last pair. So it looks like that. And then this one, I've just got to draw, finish drawing that one. 
which I'm going to do. So I need my... Now I don't exactly have the same colour, but you'll see that they are all different. Okay. And then get a pink for the toes and the heel, a bit of the top. There we go, so that each pair is mismatched. But well, what about if you had four pairs of socks? How many different ways could you mix them up? wonder if you could have a go and send us your results. Having done some work, you might need a break. So go outside, kick a ball, play skipping ropes, have a bit of exercise. That reminds me. Have you been completing Joe Wick's workout on his YouTube channel from Monday to Fridays? I hope you have. Because exercise is a really, really important thing for your body to do. Now come, we come to reading. We want you to read daily for 20 minutes. It isn't really that long and you can always do it before you go to bed every night. And don't forget to use Bug Club. There's lots of nice activities you can do that, lots of nice games. And this week we want you to find out about the habitat of the rainforest. Read the non-fiction fact sheet, Rainforest, and challenge yourself to one star, two star, or three star questions. The fact sheets and questions are in this week's folder. For art, we want you to take your pencil for a walk. So you'll need a pencil sharpener, a pencil, a piece of paper, and colouring pencils. Or you could use felt tips or crayons, depending on what you've got at home. You might even want to put some music on as you do this. It's very relaxing. So you get your pencil and you place it on your paper and just take it for a walk. There is no rights or wrongs with this. But when you're happy with the patterns that you've got, you then fill in the shapes, either using a solid colour or you could do patterns like this. It's totally up to you and eventually you'll get something like this there's lots more examples in this week's folder for DT we want you to make some paper cactuses and there's some links on the here for you to go and have a look at there's lots of different ones you can do for well-being we want you to listen to this story a huge bag of worries okay and then but remember to talk to someone if you are worried about anything and be kind and helpful each day. Also, if you're feeling a little bit sad, think about all the good things that have been happening in the world. Which brings me to the good news for this week. Do you remember at the beginning I told you that I like grizzly bears? Well, I do. And because of that, I was delighted to hear the news about this one. She is one of the oldest grizzly bears living outside of a zoo. She's known as 399. Fancy having a number as a name. She was born in 1996, making her 24 years old, which is rather old for a, a bear. And she lives in the Grand Tenant National Park in Wyoming. That's in North America, just here. Look, there's San Francisco there. Mm. Anyway, amazingly, because she's one of the oldest grizzly bears, people of the area thought she wouldn't survive the winter. And behold, in May, not only did she come out of hibernation, but she came out with four cups. She was a mummy of four. That's fantastic. And even more so, 
because the grizzly population of the area fell to less than 150. They were becoming endangered. So in 1975, an act was put in place to protect them. And today, there are at least 700 grizzlies. Well, that news made my day. I was so thrilled to hear about it. But I'm sure you've been hearing some more amazing news. And maybe you could email them to Mrs Chiswell, Miss Chalice and myself at year2 at perfectprimary.co.uk You have already sent some amazing work. So well done. Really pleased. Keep it, keep it going and send us some more. Till then, I've got to say goodbye for now. Take care. Missing you all very much.